Well, okay, burning coal and stuff changes the climate. But we know that since 50 years or so. Why did CO2 emissions still rise in 2017 then? And what has it all to do with capitalism? We'll find out today as we look at the basic factors that determine climate change on a macro level. The Kaya identity. But before we start, just a quick recap of what's at stake here. The rising temperatures are not only a problem for polar bears. First, water is expanding with higher temperatures, so islands and low coastal areas are disappearing. Second, with more energy in the system, extreme weather events like storms and droughts are becoming more severe and more frequent. Ironically, even extreme cold periods become more usual as weather patterns are less stable. Third, ecosystems collapse and land that was once arable will become desert. And those are just three of the many reasons why climate change destroys our livelihoods. Actually, the situation is so bad it can only be described with, well, fuck. To effectively combat climate change, we should ideally start 30 years ago. Yeah, 1990 was a pretty good, good year for that. Today it's not longer about preventing the bad, but rather the worst of the worst. But why is even that not happening today? Let's look at the determining factors for climate change on a global scale. In the early 90s, Yoichi Kaya described four factors that determine global CO2 emissions. The first is population. More people tend to use more products which need more energy and the production of energy causes more CO2 emissions. The second is GDP per capita and that goes with the same logic. As the economy grows, production increases, which needs more energy, which implies higher CO2 emissions. The third is energy efficiency. Here every kilowatt hour saved is reducing carbon emissions. The last point are renewable energies. As their share rises, there's less and less pressure on the climate system. So, these are the four factors, or at least how I simplified them. This would be the original formula in case you're interested, but back to our problem. Luckily, both energy efficiency and renewable energies are on the rise. Which would reduce total carbon emissions if, yes, if only population and GDP per capita were constant. Unfortunately, however, both are rising and this overcompensates the efficiency gains on the other end. Maybe now you're inclined to blame population growth, but before you do so, please have a look at this graph. In the last decades, fertility rates dropped dramatically. Today we are not that far from the stable rate of two children per woman. That's a remarkable success and it shows that we are on a good way. Which is not to say that population growth isn't a problem. We may still hit 10 billion people and that will increase pressure on the climate system. However, the elephant in the room is not population growth, but economic growth. It is no surprise that the only drops of CO2 emissions happened in the years of economic crisis, such as the global financial crisis in 2008. Richer countries tend to emit much more than poor countries. The average US America causes roughly 10 times more emissions than the average Indian and about 160 times more than the average Ugandan. And here capitalism comes into play. Economic growth is pretty much essential for our capitalistic system. No growth or negative growth equals crisis. GDP growth is necessary to recreate jobs that inevitably get lost through mechanization and automatization. Moreover, it is the only remedy to inequality that exists within capitalism. As we have seen in the video Capitalism and Inequality. To sum up, capitalism without growth is like an Oktoberfest without beer. However, with an annual growth rate of about 3%, we need much more than 3% in efficiency gains to keep our planet cool. And that has not been achieved yet. Why hasn't it been achieved yet? Shouldn't it be possible to build so much renewable energy that we can grow and reduce carbon emissions? Well, that is another topic for another video. For today, it is enough to say that economic growth is neutralizing the efficiency gains that would otherwise reduce carbon emissions.
That's it. If you want to hear more about capitalism, please subscribe. See you soon and have a nice day.